Yes, folks, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome to Mod Extra Games and Collectibles. It's a pleasure to have you here with me today. My name is Chris. I'm known online as the True Mr. Six. Track me down on Twitter, track me down on Instagram. But before you do, stick around for this video today, which is the latest instalment of... Listen to your friend Chris. In which I ask you to listen to me, your friend Chris, talk about my life as an adult collector, as a massive man-child who collects action figures, trading cards, comic books, and all sorts of other nerdy stuff. Um, you know, plastic crap that I fill my house up with. So, yeah, we're going to do about 15, 20 minutes of some adult collecting news items that have caught my eye over the last week. I'll offer some thoughts and some commentary on those and then invite you to head on down to the comments and, you know, comment for yourself and share your thoughts. So, uh, yeah, stick around for six seconds. Let's get into it. Okay then folks, well thanks for sticking around, I've got my little whiteboard here on my iPad, I've just been dropping a few pictures for some things that have caught my eye over the last week. If you're watching this in the future, we're on the 13th of December today as of recording. This is my second attempt at this video, I recorded one yesterday and I forgot to plug my microphone in, so uh, I'm having to do a re-record. But uh, yeah, a couple. Of, uh, I've got about five items on the agenda to talk about today, so let's crack on with it. And if you're a regular around these parts, then one of, the, one of your areas of interest, I suspect, will be the G.I. Joe Classified series Hasbro Pulse Stream uh, that took place last Thursday. Lots of great stuff going on there, new in-hand reveals, new name-only reveals, some uh, pre-orders, well not just some pre-orders, all the stuff they showed us went up on pre-order. Uh, just a great experience and um, frankly I'm not going to talk about it here on this video today. I'm going to do a separate video uh, and really deep dive into my thoughts and feelings about the figures and characters that they revealed on the stream the other day. But what I will say is that once again, Emily, Lenny and Tony did a tremendous job facilitating the stream. Uh, just so much energy and dynamic. They've just got the right attitude they just really make me feel like they're fans too. They've got passion for the line. Lenny and Tony, just obviously long-standing, age-old, man-child nerd fans of G.I. Joe like we are. And Emily does a fantastic job. She's a tremendous marketing manager. She really knows how to facilitate the streams. And I just find it a much more engaging experience with those guys. And it adds to my overall experience with G.I. Joe Classified series. I'm sure they're perfectly wonderful professionals in the other lines, you know, Black Series and uh, what else do I often watch? Marvel Legends. But they're so much more pedestrian and dry in tone and energy compared to the G.I. Joe Classified series stream. So keep your eyes out on the channel. There'll be a review of that coming soon. I'm always really finger on the pulse, hot on the button. It'll probably take me days to turn it around to get it out. Uh, but the G.I. Joe Classified series stream took place last week and there's loads of really exciting new pre-orders out there. So go check it out. All right, what next? Well, it is the festive season. So let's talk about something festive, shall we? Let's move over to the Fresh Monkey Fiction Naughty Orb. Or nice line. So two two points here, really. The first is the reissue of the Wave One figures have shipped. I've done it. I've jumped in despite the price of the tax, despite the price of the shipping. I've jumped in and bought a uh, just a standard Father Christmas stroke Santa Claus from the Naughty or Nice line. Uh, that is the Wave One reissue. That will be on its way. Everybody, keep your fingers crossed for me that it arrives before Christmas. It's been held in label printed hell for like five days now, which I had a rant about the other day, because what's that all about? Uh, don't send me a dispatch email, you know, your item's been shipped. If it's not been shipped, if you just printed the label and it's on a shelf in the back of your shop waiting for the FedEx man to come and pick it up, you know what I mean? Send me the email when it's gone on the back of the van. You know what I mean? Anyway, that's I'm not here to talk about that. So if you're not aware, Fresh Monkey Fiction, uh, they, they, uh, they, uh, you can only buy directly with Fresh Monkey Fiction or through Big Bad Toy Store. Now, there's no UK distributor, which is a, a theme, actually. This week we'll be talking about UK distribution of uh, US lines. Um, but what they also announced was a Wave 2. And there were two particular figures in the Wave 2 that caught my eye that I wanted to take a bit of a closer look at today. Um, but they're expanding the line to include 118 scale as well as the 112 scale stuff. They've got some animals in there there's some reindeer there's like a demonic goat go, go and check them out they're all on fresh monkey fictions website and on big bad toy store but the two that particularly caught my eye were these this uh, sergeant santa in the camo design which i just think is really tremendous for you know a military figure collector like me i think he'll be a wonderful fit next year in my gi joe classified series line i mean look at this uh, rocket launcher with the with the old candy cane 
paint application on the rocket on the end there. It's just really, really funny. Uh, you've got a fully painted face here with a uh, um, uh, General Patton style M1 military issue helmet and stuff. Got the head swap with the glasses and the cigar in his mouth, which is really fun as well. Just dead stupid. You know, <laughs> the baubles, the Christmas tree baubles as grenades, which I think is just a great bit of creativity. So that one caught my eye because I thought that'd be a really great fit to add a bit of festive flair to my G.I. Joe classified series collection when I have them out on display over the festive season. But then I also liked this one. This one caught my eye which is the Wizard Santa, which is really fun. Do you know what it kind of reminds me of? I kept meaning to go back and have a look, but it reminds me of the uh, Magical Mystery Tour scene where the four Beatles are all dressed up in Wizard's outfits. And I think John Lennon was the one in the kind of a blue piece of, um, you know, a blue frock like this one with the stars and stuff. So maybe that's why it appeals to me so much. But again, if you're you know, a fantasy figure collector, pop that guy in the middle of your Mythic Legions or your NECA d d or you know, whatever else, or maybe you're a Harry Potter fan and you've got a Harry Potter display in your house or a Lord of the Rings fan, got a Lord of the Rings display in your house. I just felt like that one there would be a really great pickup. You know, he's got a staff there like Gandalf and stuff and uh, he's got the naughty, naughty or nice list there. Where are you this year, folks? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm clearly on the nice list, but my kids are definitely on the naughty list. So yeah, there's loads of others. Go check them out. Like I say, freshmonkeyfiction.com or on Big Bad Toy Store um, because th there's quite a wide ranging selection, but these two caught my eye and I may do a pre-order. Although, although the shipping and tax was very expensive for that one that I did buy. So I may just stick with the, the kind of core generic one. I don't know, but uh, yeah, I, I love this stuff. Uh, you can see behind me, I've got, you know, I'm that guy who buys the Star Wars Black Series. <laughs> <laughs> holiday season paint app versions i just love stuff with a bit of a seasonal flair i've got some halloween figures that i bring out around halloween and things i should start work on a bit of a valentine's day theme shouldn't i anyone got any good suggestions about some valentine's theme figures that i can drop drop into the collection because i don't think i've got anything that suit that time here anyway there we go um fresh monkey fiction not your nice line wave one reissue is shipped and wave two is available and will be shipping next year all right well that's good wholesome festive fun let's go in the opposite direction now and take a look at some cake <laughs> <laughs> because Epic Hacks uh, from Boss Fight Studios have released some digital renders for the Red Sonya figure that they teased a couple of weeks ago. And this is looking like an impressive figure. So the Epic Hacks subline in uh, Boss Fight Studios is the 1 12th scale. So this is a six, six, blah, 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 six inch figure. Uh, lots of goodies and added value thrown in there. There's two head swaps you can see. Look at these. Uh, this one particularly, the... Uh, you know, the kind of battle-ready screaming face looks really awesome. Uh, but then you've got this one here uh, with a more kind of serious, um, stoic-looking face, as well as the one that comes as standard on the figure. So lots of added value. She's got a couple of weapons, a sword, a dagger, an axe, uh, hand swaps, belts, uh, a change of the... I don't know, what do you call that bit there? The loincloth, chainmail loincloth thing. One that's a, a bit less revealing with the red... Um, uh, waist scarf uh, in there um, so yeah and added bits of shoulder armor and um, uh, things around the gloves and what have you so just lots of added value great looking figure the action shot there of a really sells um, the the figure you know if you're a Red Sonja fan then uh, that not only does it show off the cake because don't get me wrong I'm not naive to the fact of what what's so eye-catching about that picture and will appeal to certain uh, corners of the adult collecting market for sure Articulated Ninja is going to be all over that one but um yeah it's uh, it shows the world of possibility in terms of posing uh Red Sonja is a really great character I read uh, I'm a Gail Simone fan I, re I read the, the Gail Simone titles uh, that she releases and uh, I read her Red Sonja run and that was really fun uh, so she's a yeah she's a, an excellent figure really interesting uh, character uh, so if you're a you know, if you've got a Conan thing going on in display or other fantasy type stuff uh, get her with some boss fight studio um, uh, skeletons animated skeletons they've got some great ones um, like a pirate one a centur centurion one or stuff she's probably at 112 she's probably a little too small to fit in with my neck of D, &D stuff to be fair i'm probably not going to get her because it is just a little bit too uh fleshy and cakey uh for my collection i think um 
but uh, I still think it looks like a tremendous figure and she's an iconic character for sure. So uh, yeah, that was something going on in the news in new releases and uh, announcements the other day. Moving away from new releases and announcements just to sort of general news stuff and I'm going to jump down here to talk about the Hasbro layoffs that were announced. I think I saw this news come out on Monday. This is the Guardian article here in the UK that reported on it. And uh, yeah, I, 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 I'm sure my sentiment is no different to many of you folks out there watching this video. This situation leaves a very bad taste in the mouth for many reasons. The first is obviously the timing. I mean, how do you, how do you let uh, 1,100 people know they're going to lose their job? weeks out from Christmas, uh, you know, in the new year. It's just it's just really awful timing. And I'm pretty confident that this is the second batch of layoffs that they've done in the last 12 months around this time of year. One of the last little... Um, didn't uh, What's his name from the G.I. Joe Classified series team go around December, January last year? So the timing of it is just really gross. You know, really gross. It's, it's obviously... Uh, or I suspect it's got something to do with um, tax returns and end of year reporting for you know, March uh, for the April tax return or whatever. But yeah, it just it's really stinky in terms of the time of year. But I'm also, as I think many are, a little aggrieved that 1,100 people have got to pay the price for what is clearly clearly C-suite level mismanagement of the organisation. What's his name? Cock. I mean, literally, his surname's Cock or Cockhead or something, uh, both suitably appropriate, you know, just wrote this very kind of saccharine, just inauthentic email around having to, you know, tighten the belt and, uh, you know, it's tough, tough news, but we've got to do what we do for the survival of the company. I'm just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're just doing what you got to do to make sure you and your shareholders can still cash your check at the end of the year. So it leaves a really bad taste in the mouth. Uh, I've seen some folks out there in the adult collecting world who've been like, yeah, well, if you did better with Black Series and blah, 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 blah. And they're not wrong. You know, there's definitely valid criticisms around uh, cost cutting and price increases and quality control and line standards in the adult collecting. But we, we must remember that we're one part of a much larger narrative there. You know, I belong, uh, I'm a tabletop gamer. I've seen some talk in the d and and uh, Magic the Gathering, you know, the Wizards of the Coast world around this whole thing they're letting people go over there and that's like the most profitable wing of the organization there was news reports about the entertainment division that had made the DD movie i think it's called e1 or hasbro one or something like that um they've just sold that off or struck a deal with that or something i don't know it's just all very uh you know their entertainment divisions just been sold off and two paid over to another firm and uh, i don't know uh, but the, the the simple fact of the matter is the bottom line is that the main issue here is that folks are not buying Monopoly. They're not buying Scrabble. They're not buying Cranium. Nerf isn't you know what it used to be. I mean, is the is the My Little Pony world still as strong as it used to be? Um, since they moved away from Friendship is Magic, I think it's not been as strong. Um, I know my kids have very little interest in those more traditional kind of toys. You know, Mr. Potato Head, My Little Pony, Play-Doh. Um, you know, I, I couldn't get them to sit down to play Monopoly, ever. Although they will sit down and play, uh, you know, a more full-bodied board game like Takinoko or something with me, so uh, or Quacks of Quedlinburg. But uh, so I think it's you know it's one. There's a larger picture at play here where I think you you know your My Little Ponies, your your, your Play-Dohs of the world uh, are where it's really falling down in combination with uh, whatever the entertainment division, however they're fucking up. I mean the D and D film was pretty good, but I don't think I'm sure I read somewhere that it it didn't uh, it wasn't enormously profitable. So, uh, yeah, just a really bad taste in the mouth. And I just don't like this, you know, the 1% protecting themselves, shareholder interests coming before uh, being a, uh, an engaged organisation with a community, a family-style community within the company there. Uh, the people just being treated like a, literally like a human resource to be um, hired and fired as they see fit. I'm reminded, actually, go and Google it, but there was an organisation I read about a few years ago, not to start bringing my real life into my nerd life, but there was an organisation I read about years ago called the Barry Waymiller Company, and they came across tough times, and the, the, the guy at the top there in the board, I think his name was Robert Chapman, Bob Chapman, um, just decided like, no, this, we, we are, uh, you know, I have a responsibility to my employees, I, I have a responsibility towards these people, I, I want to treat them like a family, we've been working on having a, you know, a, a community contract 
subconscious culture. So he initiated a scheme where everybody, including himself and, and his and his board, you know, the C-suite level employees and the executives, all had to, they did like a roll-in furlough pattern where everybody agreed to take a four-week unpaid holiday um to 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 help the you know the financial situation i think they like suspended the 401k and stuff uh, for a short period of time uh, but everybody including him the ceo took that unpaid four week period but what they then did is set it up as a flexible scheme so you could trade furlough so you know if i was in a financial position where i could do six weeks or eight weeks of furlough and my colleague over there wasn't well i would take eight weeks unpaid and give four weeks pay to a colleague who couldn't afford to take the time off so like the the corporate execs who were you know incredibly well remunerated took care of other people in the organization and yeah they managed to to weather the storm so when you look at an organization like that that i've read about where it actually you know the employees are treated as as contributing members of the organization and that they're not paying the price for potential mismanagement although i think barry wayne miller was credit crunched um, anyway, whereas this just feels, it just leaves a really bad taste. It's, a, it's an awful look for the organisation. Two sets of layoffs in, what, a 12 months period. And uh, folks are out and about. I've seen them on the socials. They've been investigating the bonuses and the salaries and the, and the dividends that the shareholders have been paying and saying, look, what's going on over here? This guy's still getting his bonus. Uh, this lady on the board's got, you know, this enormous salary. Uh, the shareholders are still getting a dividend payment of this, but 1,100 people are going to lose their jobs. After what? They let 600 800 go last december january yeah it's just i'm i'm just <laughs> the only way to affect it is to vote with our wallets and that's that's a hard pill to swallow as well because i'm very passionate about the collecting of some hasbro lines but i'd be the first to admit i've bought far less hasbro stuff this year than than i've ever done you know i've barely picked up a i'm not picked up a black series and barely picked up any marvel legends at all this year so i can see why it's happening you know and my kids pff, no interest in hasbro related kind of ip stuff they're, they're not physical play is just not what it is and whether you think that's a good thing or a bad thing it's just not what it is anymore my son would much prefer you know e-vouchers for fortnite skins you know so yeah real bad taste i'm sure i'm not alone there just it's a very bad look for hasbro that and uh, I'm a bit unimpressed with the uh, with their with their corporate responsible behaviour there or irresponsible behaviour. It's not right, man. I really feel for those 1,100 people, and uh, my thoughts are with them. All right. Well, while we're talking about you know professionalism and and what have you, let's talk about what's going on here with uh, Action Force. So a couple of days ago, uh, Bobby Valor hopped up on uh, their Instagram page on the Valorverse Instagram page and shared a video saying that the new UK-based supplier that they'd secured, which is Kapow Toys. Uh, pulled out the deal at the last minute and they've got no action force supplier here in the UK. Now, this has been a tale of ups and downs, really. There was, uh, to, to give you the facts, there was a UK-based independent retailer called Toys R Armor, which was the Valiverse distributor here in the UK. Um, that went belly up. There was a lot of drama around that too uh, because of the manner in which they went belly up and lots and lots of people lost out on pre-order money. In fact, I made another video a while ago saying how it's, it's changed my pre-order habits now because I don't pay full price up front anymore uh, i'll only give deposits or take stuff on tick because of uh, i lost money on the toys rama falling through on some action force figures actually interestingly enough um so yeah it's been a world of ups and downs i know some folks carried on collecting action force directly from valiverse uh for, th in this period of time in the hope that we would get a, a uk-based uh company to pick it up um but the shipping tax on that was extraordinary you know and i would argue valiverse Action Force figures weren't necessarily worth the inflated cost that that shipping was, was giving. But folks are passionate about the line and they wanted to collect it. Um, and there was some interesting stuff. You know, I had my eye on a Pandora. That's one of the pre-ordered figures that I lost out on. So uh, a deal was announced with Kapow Toys a little while ago and then Bobby posted his video there. And uh, I've got to say that uh, while I'm talking about uh, organisations leaving a bit of a bad taste in their mouth, I, I wasn't very keen on the way that Bobby Valor presented the video um, and um, yeah, how he kind of threw Kapow Toys under the bus. Uh, I know there's folks in the comments there on the Instagram page, I was reading it, who kind of gave, applauded, you know, let's applaud the transparency about this situation, but it wasn't a particularly transparent situation because it was only telling one side of the story. And I've found it to be particularly unprofessional if i'm being perfectly honest but that's just my opinion other opinions are available you know uh, some can interpret that as um 
uh, transparent customer interaction. Others, like myself, might um, view that as a, a little bit of a uh, unprofessional childish response to the situation but whatever um but what it does mean is that we haven't got uh, you know a uk based uh, independent distributor you know now i'm a big believer that that things are you know people don't do things for no reason there will there will be a reason uh, that kapow toys are pulled out at this late stage of the deal at this late stage of the agreement um i don't th- you know all things happen for a reason they, they they will have a motivation kapow toys haven't commented on it at all there's been nothing there's been no um you know they've not they've not responded to bobby valley's response there will have been a reason there'll be something unfavorable in the terms that were agreed uh where they've left it till the last possible minute to um back out of the deal because of an unfavorable term or something's gone on you know i but there's another side to this story but i don't think we'll ever get it i actually think um silence in this type of situation and just a statement of facts is a more appropriate way of proceeding um but uh, in any case it just means if you're an action force fan folks and you're in the uk your only option right now is to continue buying directly from valiverse overseas um or picking them up from uh, other us independent retailers and shipping them over we, we've got no one over here to uh, uh to, to buy them from which is a shame i've, I've got to be honest i've i I was already dialing back my Action Force purchases. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of the line. Um, I, I mean, I've got no grudge against the figures. I think some of them are really decent. Like I said, I pre-ordered a Pandora and... Uh, oh, what was the name? You know, with the face. <laughs> anyway, I had a couple of figures on pre-order that I thought might be nice additions to collection, but I'm not a, um, I'm not in as deep as I am with G.I. Joe Classified series. Uh, I, th- I think they're more flawed, the figures, than uh, some folks are willing to to admit but um uh yeah it's just it's one of them you know it, it sucks for fans of Oliver's here in the united kingdom at the end of the day and whatever's gone on we may never know uh but i think there's more to the story than meets the eye and whatever's gone on the people who are paying at the end of the day are the uk-based consumers which really sucks but it's just one of those things that you're going to hear me talking about a lot here on this channel because there are uh, boutique niche action figure creators based in the United States who do great work um, that I'm, that I see all the time. And I think I would love, 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 love to collect that line or at least own a handful of the figures from that line. I talked about it last week with the, uh, the Ghost of Marley. Uh, I was looking at the Skeletron stuff uh, a couple of days ago and was just like, oh my God, the shipping's horrific. And once again, I'll encourage companies like Valiverse, like Fresh Monkey Fiction, like Boss Fight Studios, like the guys who are doing the uh, Skeletron uh it's just the company's name's just completely fallen out of my head you know um oh it's gone it's gone but anyway you know get together folks get a nice little i don't know cooperative shipping cooperative that with a partner over here or something uh, there must be a solution that can work i know in the board game market i've heard about this happening where companies come together and uh, you know they, they they get a little um collaborative group together who then shares the burden of uh, a shipping container or whatever to get some stock into Europe and into the United Kingdom. Um, so it is possible to do. Uh, but anyway, circling back around to the Valiverse thing, uh, you know, I've seen folks there saying, well, maybe one of the other popular independent retailers like Comics and Cocktails, the whole shebang, In Demand Toys, you know, one of those guys, Star Action Figures, perhaps they can secure something there. But uh, um, one of the things I have noticed is that the independent retailers over here are very collegiate. They talk. So whatever Kapow's Toys' reason for backing out of the deal, the others will be aware of it, I suspect. Um, so I don't know if that has uh, somewhat of a knock-on effect. But um, yeah, there we go. Just yeah, you know, more Valiverse drama, although uh, with a much smaller... Co- Ooh, moving my little crosses there off the things. Um, with a much smaller kind of uh, target demographic there and the UK-based buyers. Right, is that it? Yeah, that's everything I dropped on my whiteboard to talk about this week, folks. So I'll thank you for coming along and listening to me uh, share some thoughts and comments on some things that caught my eye in the world of action figure collecting this week. Uh, again, I'll reiterate from the top of the video, please do head on down to the comments below and share your thoughts and commentary. And also, uh, I mentioned this in, in last week's instalment, there's so much news and so much stuff going on all the time. It just kind of whizzes past your ears or you, you you know you miss it for whatever reason. So if you've got anything that you want to recommend or point me in the direction of or you think, hey, I'm getting to know Chris a little bit and I reckon he'd like this, then fire some links down there or point me in the direction of some things to take a look at. I'd welcome all that kind of stuff. Um, if you want to uh, share some thoughts and views on the stuff that I've shared some thoughts and views on today, then get that in there too. Uh, just whatever. I just love chatting with you guys down in the comments. But uh, in the meantime, I'll be back next week. I'll probably 
do one more just before Christmas uh, and then start again in the new year. Um, I'll be back next week. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week. And uh, I'll see you around these parts again sometime soon. All right. See you later, folks. <laughs>